Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit my dear brothers and sisters we celebrate today the solemnity of the epiphany of the lord like the magi who visited bethlehem and saw jesus lying in the manger let us also bring forth our gifts to our savior especially our prayers our intentions, and our service. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Oh, 
Panginoon, maawa ka sa amin. Panginoon, maawa ka sa May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations, by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the reaches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ifa, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, with your judgment endowed king, and with your justice, the king's son, you shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall offer gifts, 
the kings of Arabia and Ziba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. 
he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today is the great solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord, the manifestation of God to the world. Traditionally, we call this feast the Feast of the Three Kings, representing the Magi who brought gifts to Jesus when the Lord was manifested to them. That is why in other countries, traditionally, they give their Christmas gifts on this day. Sa ibang bansa po, ngayon pa lang nagbibigayan ng regalo ng Pasko sapagkat inaalala ang pagbibigay din ng regalo ng mga mago kay Jesus. Kaya po, hindi pa huli ang lahat. Baka nakakalimutan nyo pa ang regalo na dapat ibigay nyo o pilit ninyong kinakalimutan ang pagbibigay. Itong araw na ito ay inaalala natin sa pagbibigay ng kanilang handog. But I do not want to focus on giving gifts. The center of the celebration is not just about the gifts, but it is about the one to whom the gifts were given. And it is about Jesus. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, one character in the reading of the gospel and even in our prayers today is the character of the star. The star that guided the Magi to Bethlehem and stopped on the spot where the Holy Family were. I would like to offer a reflection this morning about being the star. Many times, my dear brothers and sisters, we have forgotten the true meaning of the star. We think that if you are the star, you are the center of the attention. But the star in the gospel reading today would like to change our idea of being the star. In the gospel reading today, the Magi were following the guidance of the star. They were overjoyed when they saw the star. But when the star stopped on the spot where the manger was, at that time, 
the Magi have already seen Jesus. And they have forgotten already about the star. Being the star does not mean you are the center of attention. Being the star in the gospel means you are just a guide. And when you have already shown Jesus, you disappear because you are not the center of attention. Jesus is the center of the attention of the Magi. Minsan po, mayroong lumapit sa akin. Sabi niya, Father, you are already an internet star. Wow! Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, ang daming nakakakilala sa'yo. Ang daming nanonood sa'yo nung pandemic, noong online mass. Many times, we understand being a star like that. You are the center of attention. Kaya nga marami sa atin ang pastar. Ang tawag natin dyan, star complex. Akala mo ikaw ang center of attention. Akala mo ikaw palagi ang sikat. Ikaw palagi ang dapat pansinin. Kaya kapag hindi ka napansin, you are disappointed and frustrated. That is not about being a star. In fact, there are billions of stars in the sky. You are not just one. You are not always the center of attention. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, in this time and age, let us change our idea of a star. It is only about guiding one another to the true star, the true center of attention, and that is Jesus. In our first reading today, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, we see here that Jerusalem will become a radiant light. But Jerusalem will become a radiant light not because it shines by itself. Jerusalem was radiant because God is their true star. God is their true light. My dear brothers and sisters, who do we consider as the true star in our life? Or do we consider ourselves even stars in this world and we have forgotten the true meaning of the star in the Epiphany story. My dear brothers and sisters, nito pong mga nakaraang araw ay mayroong lumabas na pag-aaral, mayroong lumabas na ilang mga reflections. Ang sabi nila, tayo daw na mga Pilipino, we have this celebrity complex. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito? Sabi nila, we worship celebrities. Sabi niyang pag-aaral, kapag ka ang isang tao ay may pangalan, ginagalang natin. Kapag ang isang tao ay artista, kapag ang isang tao ay nasa pwesto, we treat them as stars and celebrities. And we give them homage. 
we give them respect. But sometimes, we give them too much respect. Kaya nga, sa panahon natin ngayon, kapag ka wala kang pangalan, hindi mo rin makakamit ang hustisya. Kapag may pangalan ka, kapag maganda ang apelido mo, kapag konektado ka sa makapangyarihan, makakamit mo ang hustisya. Celebrity complex. Star complex. Mabuti ba ito para sa atin? Or do we need to change our idea of a star? Do we need to change our idea of celebrities that we treat them as stars and we give them too much homage and we forget Jesus in the little ones Jesus in those who are suffering I hope my dear brothers and sisters today as we reflect on the character of the star in the gospel who guided the Magi to Jesus. Let us also be reminded of the true meaning of what a star is. In our second reading today, from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, St. Paul did not look at himself as the star. In fact, he said, the Gentiles are co-heirs, co-members, co-partners. Hindi ako ang sikat, hindi ako lamang ang dapat sikat. Sa totoo lang, sabi ni San Pablo, kasama niyo rin ako, kaisa niyo rin ako, pare-parehas lamang tayong naglilingkod sa Diyos. Kahit ako ay apostol, sabi ni San Pablo, kahit ako ang pinuno sa simbahan, hindi dapat ako ang star. Si Jesus lamang at tayong lahat ay pare-parehas na naglilingkod sa Panginoon. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Epiphany of the Lord, let us be reminded that the true meaning of a star is not to be the center of attention. The star is not to be worshipped. The star is not to be given homage. The star is just shining because it is guiding us to Jesus. Let us remove our star and celebrity complex, but instead, be reminded that Jesus must always be the center of our lives. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man.
For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and, and the, the life, life of, of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Gathered here, we share a living tradition, a glorious promise, for the light of Christ continues to shine for all peoples. Let us pray for men and women of all languages, races, and cultures. For every petition, let us say, Lord, Hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth in her fold. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of a world in darkness, that their leaders may be drawn to the dawning brightness of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a universal charity, that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of humble worship in our own lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist, with the devotion of the Magi who brought gifts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that eternal light may shine on them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God and Father, your Son is light from light your glowing sign to all nations. As we pray for the peoples of your world, help us to strengthen the bonds of unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
prayers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your Church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but He who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ, as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Benedict XVI, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso est ibi Deo Patri Onipotenti in unitate spiritu sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. We would like to thank all of you for joining us in this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We thank also all those who are joining us through the online broadcast of this Mass. We give to you and partake and give to all of you and share with you the Christmas blessings, especially as we celebrate today the Solemnity of the Epiphany. When you exit upon the doors of the cathedral, you will be receiving a small prayer card with the picture of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. And at the back of the prayer card is a prayer for the soul of our Pope Emeritus. Let us continue to pray for him and offer masses for the repose of his soul. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity now and forever. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters now and forever. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh,